to Father Jones, you, to Bishop Primus, to all men and women of God. <coughs> Children of God. Yes, yes. Children of the living arm. Come on now, come on. Grace, mercy, yes. and peace. Yes. Amen? Yes. I, I sat in my seat and as the young lady introduced me, I quiver and began to sweat. When you have such a, a, an introduction, you have to rise to the call. But indeed, I understand that I must decrease, that God would increase. Go ahead, preacher. So, you'll get a word. May not be what you want to hear. And definitely, it's not going to be from me. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm just going to be the vessel. But the word is going to come from the Lord. For except the Lord build, the house, they, labor. they labor in vain. Amen? Yeah. Let me pause for a minute because when I get into the word, I'm going to get excited. Amen? Um, don't worry about how I didn't sing or, you know, she didn't sing yet and all that thing. And Tradition. You ain't got to worry. Tradition. Go on, I got to sing to get in the groove because I'm in the groove already. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit lives in me. I'm not worried. But I want to pause for a minute and take a, a second out of the time, Bishop Knight, and say to the church that the young lady that introduced me, my, my baby girl, like I call her my daughter, amen, and do a brief advertisement. That she has just wrote a book, Father Jones. Mm. She has just published a book by the name of A Second Time that I fell in love with Jesus. Yeah. It's the testimony of a pastor's book. Hallelujah. And um, I'm saying this that you would support, amen? amen? I'm saying this because this is our future. And when they are striving, we need to push them up, amen? So she wrote a book entitled The Second Time I Fell in Love with Jesus. And I'm not saying this because I'm her mama. But baby girl could write. She got away with words because the Lord has anointed her. So her book launch is on May 9th, March 9th. I take a deep breath. May 9th because that's, it was back then and then we, we brought the time forward. Amen. Hallelujah. So she has a book launch March 9th. Um, she's on social media. You can check her at Shireen Samuel. She also has a vlog that she, she writes. Amen. Uh, there's a little series that she does with myself that's called Mama and Me. Um, if you just all hallowed it up and Holy Ghost filled and sanctified, don't watch it. Because we talk about some real raw stuff. Some issues that the church must deal with, but sweep it under the rug. We are transparent and vulnerable at that time. Because due to our transparency, we leave ourselves vulnerable to your imagination. Hallelujah. So bless the Lord. I pray God that you would pray her up. For it takes a village to raise a child. And I know that the devil is upset. Because the book says a second time that I fell in love with Jesus, which means she must have fell out of love at some point in time. Yeah, amen. <laughs> and now that she's in love again, he's getting his imps ready. But I ain't worried. Because I know there's some poor prayer warriors in the house. And you don't have to know me and I don't have to know you. But all you got to know is that this young lady have a dream and a desire for the kingdom building of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and declares that wheresoever I go, that my church must go. And when I rise, that my church was ri must rise. So we glorify God for that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So that the word today is when God check your faith. I looked at various scriptures. And there is a, a great host of scripture. And I thought, which one do I want to read? 
do I want to read one particular scripture or do I want to leave it open that I could move around? And um, if this was in my home, I would leave it open so that I can move around. You see, I didn't want to stay by Abraham alone. Mm. Hallelujah. Because there's a great cloud of witnesses. Yes. But every now and again, I wanted to check the other patriarchs of the faith. But nonetheless, because of tradition, and to rest some people mind at ease, I would lay the foundation in the book of Genesis, Go the ahead. 22nd chapter. The first to the 17th verse. But don't hold me to task. Because that's the foundation. And there would be a need that I go back to the warehouse to get the windows and the doors okay. and other material that is necessary. Come on. Hallelujah. Because when God checks your fate. Well, well, well. We love to say that we are blessed and highly favored. And I thought, what a time. I thought about Mary, mm. who was blessed and highly favored. And immediately after her blessing, she had to run. I thought about Abraham, blessed and highly favored. Come on, come on, come on. Blessed and highly favored comes with a price. So when God your faith. What a time. What a time. So in the book of Genesis 22 1 to 17. Amen? Amen. I know that we are acquainted with the word, yes? Do you want me to read 1 to 17? Fix it. <laughs> Choice is yours. Go ahead. 1 to 17 tells a story. Go ahead. It speaks yes. about a man that was called by God. A man who was favored by God. Well. Who until thus far had been very faithful to the call of God. Hallelujah. And it says that because of his faithfulness, God was about to check his so he said to Abraham, mm -hmm. you see that boy that you have? That boy, yes. Not just any regular boy, mm -hmm. but he said to him, this one boy, mm -hmm. the promise boy, yes. the boy that was not ordinary, the boy that which the seed of many nations was supposed to come out of, I want you to take that boy. Yes. Isaac. Yes, yes. Come on. I want you to go and sacrifice. Yes. But what a love that even in that, the book says that the Lord did not tell him where exactly he was going. So he asked him to sacrifice his one boy child and still sent him on a journey of an uncertain destination. Uncertain destination. Do you understand that when you're not sure where you're going and the GPS starts up, you get nervous and you want to pull aside. You don't want to move anymore until I am sure of my destination. But God was checking his faith not once but twice. Amen. Well, somebody says, Well, ahead, why does good people suffer? suffer? <laughs> and you know, I, I done went over that already, and I came over that hurdle already. So, why am I still suffering? Why am I going through this again? Because he checks your faith continually. Yeah. It's not a one-time process. Hallelujah. The book says that Abraham didn't hesitate. Abraham did not speak with the boy's mother. Hallelujah. Logic. Logic.
God, Jay. Ha! Because can a mother's tender kid cease to want the child? Imagine that Abraham would have taught in himself that the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. And if this is what God says, then thus will I do. When God begins to check your faith, you have to have that bold assurance. When somebody say that they're going to check your faith, it means that you're going to be tested. It means that they're going to go through you with a fine comb. You see, because a lot of us in the house of God, and we're making a boss. Mm. That my boast is in the Lord. And we boast about the goodness of God. And we boast we both, but when we are tested yes. and we are tried, yes. we forget yes. about the goodness of the Lord. Can I tell you that God don't require nothing of you that he hasn't already equipped you with? He did not sort out to test Abraham before he blessed him. But he blessed him first. And then he sought out. Yes, sir. Amen. The word says. Uh, somewhere in the book of Exodus. Uh, it says that God had a people. That there was a famine in the land. And he made provision. God knew that the famine was going to come. So. The brothers thought they was doing their brother Joseph a harm. But they didn't know that God was preparing for the test that was about to come in the latter day. I say God has already equipped you with what you need to be an overcomer of your test. But you got to believe it. You got to understand it. And you got to recognize it. Hallelujah. So Israel goes through. See I'm in the book of Exodus now. Israel goes through a farming. And they have to go back to their brother. Amen. And when they get there. It says that before their brother died. That the Lord prosper them. You know you happy to me. You have blessed enough. Start a wave and we start to dance and we lift up with holy hands and think that the devil will just sit down. But sometimes I'm here to tell you it's not even about the devil, but it's God Himself that is checking your loyalty, He's checking your character, He's checking what manner of man are you? Are you just a lay say say ah ah and you don't do nothing? You see, God did not ask for the quantity of our faith, but he asked about the quality. And the quality of our faith says that if it be small as a mustard seed, oh Jesus, but I wasn't concerned with the mustard seed because I learned through studying that this small mustard seed, if it is natured, if it is planted in good soil, that it is a mighty tree. You know, you have to ask God to build your faith because your faith could be building. So it says that Joseph dies and another king comes about. You see, because we are wrong people that we know, we're going to meet some people that don't know us. They don't really care who we are. They don't care how good I can preach the word of God. They don't care who Father Jones is. They don't care about Bishop Primus. But all they know is that you make a bows. And especially if your bows make them look small to the next man. Go ahead, preacher. Go ahead. So they begin to devise a plan where they think that they could check your feet. It says that the new king, when he saw how prosperous Israel was, he called his men and said, look, we got to subdue these people. Because if we don't subdue them, they will take over the land. But the word of God cannot be held by 
I walk into his will, and if I walk in according to his commandments, then I shall be blessed. Shall be blessed, man. Whether you like it or not, but whether you don't like it, no, 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 no. I shall be blessed. Be blessed. No, 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 no. So it says now, Israel as a result was put into bondage. Bondage, man. Bondage. So why me? Why? Why? Because you're anointed. Yes. Why? Why? Because you are called. Why? Because you're not ordinary. Yes. Hallelujah. And it says that after that period of time mm. and the test came, that God come back again. This is another time, eh? He come back again. And he said, oh, Israel, look, I'm the people that I love. Hear what's going to happen. I'm going to send my servant that he going to take you out of bondage. But God knew that there was another way to get to the promised land. But he have a desire that your desire and zeal and all your praise go to him. So he said, I will make them go to the Red Sea. Mm. Moreover, if they go on the other side, over there it have some warriors. <laughs> Cut them down. I'm telling you. They're going through plenty of pressure. Plenty check faith program and you're, you're just moping and you're in self pity. But I'm here to tell you that your pressure is going to measure the measure of your faith. Your pressure is going to give birth to a new character. Your pressure is going to make the old man fall off. Come on, fix it. Fix it. Because some of us water baptism didn't do it. Come on. Amen. Didn't work. Jesus. You see, we still have folks that baptize and in the church 40 plus years and, and they are yet waiting to be saved. Come on, preacher. I said, preacher, preach. They're still waiting for deliverance. The God that I saw is not slack in his promise. You already came into the house of the Lord. And because you show up, whether you like it or not, he says, many that come unto me. Deny yourself, man. Take up your cross and follow. Come on, preacher. Hallelujah. So he saved them another time. And when they got to the Red Sea, Pharaoh was behind them. And the Red Sea before them. Check. Your faith. The faith. Huh? He delivered them first, you know. He delivered them first, you know. Give them provision for the journey too. Because he had softened the heart that Pharaoh would give unto them. Because he knew he was about to lead them into the wilderness to check. The faith. Well, well, well. Let me tell you. Don't despise your wilderness period. Don't despise your wilderness season. And even so, he provided yet again. He tell the leader, this is what I want you to do. And the sea was parting. He waited until Pharaoh and his men was close enough. Pharaoh looking at him and he said, mm -hmm. That God you have. You know, some people look at you and say, Uh huh. That faith you have. That boast that you have. You think you're all that. But you wait and see. But oh God, I'm reminding that Job said, Don't want it. Yet within my flesh. You see, it's a confidence that you must have, not in the present circumstances, but in your help that you have been in ages past. And as a result of help in ages past, he must now be your hope. Let me pause. Let me pause. 
Because some of us going through, but some of you going through wilderness period. And you're at the Red Sea. Your back is against your Pharaoh. Your face in the sea. And your Moses trying to admonish you on how to cross the Red Sea. But you're so busy. You're so busy because you know God already for yourself. And if you could call God, then why can't I call him? Huh? People still say that he's your father and my godfather. So are we still thinking that, right? If you're talking to Bishop, not all right, why, why can't he speak to me? Huh? So you're not following no directions. So you stay with your back towards your Pharaoh and the sea before you. But oh God Almighty, hallelujah. I want to save somebody tonight. I want to give you a word. I want to give you a word because the cloud is so much dread. It's not as dreadful as you think, you know. It's not as dreadful, you know. It has mercy and it's going to burst. It blessings. But I think about that and in my mind, the picture that comes up right now is a full balloon. And even though the balloon looks like it's one to explode, except you pop the balloon. So the blessing and the mercy has already been pronounced. But it requires that you do something. I imagine that God talked to himself. They don't say enough. You don't say enough. But I dare you to trust him. So they get over there. And they get into the wilderness. And in no matter of time, when they're on the Jordan, I can imagine they were dancing. Could you imagine? That God swallowed up your whole army. Yes. For people that oppressed you. Okay. So my y'all, too safe, so you're not gonna be like that and you're praying for your enemies and you're not gonna find no glory when your enemy get destroyed. But I thought to myself, Father Jones, that if I sometimes say like David and I tell God to deal with my enemy and deal with them swiftly and rise up against me without a cause, when God deal with them, why must I pretend? That's right. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Why should I complain? Why complain? You're too fake. And because we are double-minded, we are neither here nor there. So nothing we ask, we can't get. So we devils and his imps is parading over us. They're waving their banner. They put us to sit down. Tell us when to rise. Come on, preacher. Come on, come on. But it's a lie straight from the pit of hell. Send them back. Hmm? God say you are sent ten legions of angels. Yes. yes. So, who are you? All right. yes. Do you want the enemies? Come on. Or do you want to pretend like you're holy? Because do you want to pretend like you're perfect? Come on now. If you want to pretend like you're perfect, let me help you be perfect. Because perfection is not the amount of sin that you do not commit, but perfection is maturity to understand. And you will understand that if you ask of God. Come on, preacher. Hallelujah. Perfection. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm. Pointing out people's sin. Come on, preacher. So we're talking about perfection. I want to be perfect. I know I can't say that. Because it's not going to be in my oh, power yes. to say that. Oh, yes. And why should I say that? Uh -huh. And I've heard people say that they don't have no enemy. Uh -oh. And I love everybody. <laughs> Let me say something. Oh, yes. Maybe I don't have no enemy. But I know enemy got but. me. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Logic. Enemy got me. Logic. So if you in the army of the living God and want to pretend like there's not another regiment that trying to kill you, then you be holy. But leave me and my unsanctified self with me, God, where I will rise up till the break of day. Yes, my 
unsanctified self. Come on, preacher. Do you understand? Yes, I like that. The reason that you keep going back to the same checkpoint is because you're failing the examination every time. Ouch. I grew up in the Caribbean. Yes. So you gotta pass standard one. Yes. You gotta pass standard two to go to standard three. If you don't pass, when they check your work, because that's what check your faith is saying, you know, it's your work that is being checked. No more theory, because you're a brilliant doctor in theory. And do you know what you're worried about? Not how to do it properly the next time or not. You're worried about how this 10-year-old could come now and be smarter than this 14-year-old. Oh, Jesus. Because you're too busy peeping over your neighbor fence. Huh? Oh, Jesus. So, some of you maybe might have copy, like the bishop said. And because of your copying from a bright student, you was able to go to standard four. You might be able to get to standard five. But the higher you go, the higher it is. Because Esther, you don't say, 
I made you boast of God. So, woman of God, know that you could talk so good. Would you save everybody else and lose your whole soul? And God looking at me. Well, who you think you are? I'm no respect to a person. So while God was checking Israel, he was checking the patriarch Moses. Mm -hmm. You see, my checkpoint is your checkpoint. Because our destination is the same. And if the destination is the same, we must go through the same checkpoint. So forget it. Don't bother with nobody else. Just check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because while you were checking me, I was like David, running into my bedroom, laying and prostrating upon the ground, and saying, God Almighty, have mercy and compassion. But because the thing I did was so grievous, I desired, Lord, that not for my sake, but remember the promise that you made to Solomon, that if my people I don't know about you. Even when I'm doing bad, I know whose people come on, I am. Oh, yes. Come on, come on, come on. You see, if you know who you belong to, even in your filth, you would not be afraid to go before the throne of grace and say, Lord, pardon and accept me now. As I am. Hallelujah. Love David. David said, judge me. Mm. <laughs> if I do wrong, I go tell God, judge you, and you know you're wrong. <laughs> All right. So I done did some things in my life. And I said, God, judge me. Away to the integrity of my heart. Because I understand the word of God, that his grace is sufficient to keep me, and that if I confess, if I turn away from a wicked ways, yes. then, then he will hear. Then and then he will heal the land. You can't come out of your test because you ain't ready to confess nothing. The perfect. You're not ready to confess about nothing. Or you busy telling God. Look at how Jane making God's house a house of dens and thieves. And look how they manipul manipulating the bishop and they manipulating the leader. Come on. You see, that's not your business. Your business is for you to get right with God. You get right with God. Mm -hmm. Oh God. So don't be surprised when your faith is challenged to a wrestling match. Yes, yes. A wrestling match means that there's two opponents. One must win. I said to you before, stop acting like it's you alone in the ring and you got time. Yeah. And think, well, I'm just gonna pray and I'm gonna chill. You see, sometimes when you are in the ring, and your opponent is coming before you, you need to get some other things. Mm. Okay. Not you, just me. <laughs> get me. some other things. It's Come me. on. It's just me. But I recognize that uncircumcised Philistine. You see why I say you need to get something? Because we gotta love our brethren. And we gotta, I love my brethren. But you see the uncircumcised demon that possesses you to interfere with the Lord's anointing, that's the one I want to chop down. My quarrel is not with you, you know. God says that I, I love the man, but I hate the sin. I'm telling you, this holy pretensiveness masquerade is going to cost you. It's going to cost you the ultimate price because you're too scared or too busy. Because some people are not scared. You're just busy pretending. You know what Bishop said about 
know, people who party and all that kind of thing. I think I, I, I get to go, I think one, it wasn't a real party. The whole of them, they had those buzzers, and if you stay like six o'clock, the light turn off. But you know, you gotta be home by 6.30, <laughs> because you know when you have a mother like mine that just whoop you if you sneeze, yeah. whoop you if you smile, whoop you, whoop you, whoop you. <laughs> you know? So I was busy, when the light dark, when the light dark, uh, painting gotta start. Find your wall and begin to paint. Because you only have a few minutes to paint. <laughs> and you do what you gotta do quickly. And you get out of there. But what happens is that we need to understand where we came from. Where are you going? Who is it is that called you? So you you dust up the wall and you you run home before dark. Mm. Mm. Because they're gonna be hell to pay. And I don't know about you. Some people used to say I'm gonna get licks anyway, so I might as well stay. Let me tell you, if you had a mama like mine <laughs> that whoop you and went and had You ain't doing nothing. The word of God says so too. As carnal man disciplines their children, so too your Savior will discipline you. You see, a checkpoint is to discipline you because you are in Christ, but you lack discipline. You lack principle. You lack quality. So we get in the Lord's house. We say we forget. We don't play mass anymore. No? Yes. We don't put on those little costumes and we don't do that anymore. But what we have, we have, what we have become, become to perfectionate is the masquerade. Because we're in a masquerade ball. So we have on beautiful gowns. But we have our masks. Yes. And we're moving in such angelic movements. And our movement looks so holy because we are so familiar with the movement. And we've been practicing for so long. And we boast that we've been in the house of the Lord 40 long years. Oh, and I never get weary. You ain't get weary because you ain't never walk.
Well, she can't beat me from America. And my granny, if I, yep. if I say I want 10 food to eat, she cooks it. Message. Message. But it was because I had learned to honor and respect. Where did he get that mirror from? 
I know the relationship that I have with God. Yes. How could you tell me I am not a child of God? Yes. How you could tell me? Because you might prevent have experienced some grace. Mm -hmm. And you confused it with covenant. Yes. You cover, you confused it that you were part of the commonwealth. But you're not. Some of us get through checkpoints because of the man that we stand in next to grace. Yes. but don't want nobody discipline them. Okay, okay. So you go when you want. Silent. You come when you want. Yes. You stay home how long yes. you want. And then you show up when you want. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Fix so it. I had some people that stayed away for a couple of months. Yes. Huh? They send me daily wood. Yes. <laughs> but they're not saying, Pastor, I'm sick enough. Or even saying, Pastor, I'm not coming back by you because I'm not going to vex with you because maybe your season has passed. And if your season has passed, you must forget because you can't stay where God don't want you to stay. Or maybe some people are hot foot and they didn't even wait on God. But their own vain imagination caused them to run. Don't frighten. If you really love God, He will work all things together for good. So I know where you're safe. So I ain't worried. So I said to them in a beautiful text, I like to send love texts. <laughs> and I said to them how wonderful they are. And I said, but those of you who have not been in church for the past couple of months, nor did you find it in your heart to say to me, whether you're sick or whether you're sad, I don't know who is pouring into you or who you are laying in bed with. Because some of you laying in bed with your son. Huh? And your Tobias. And your Jezebels. Come on, preacher. I said you're a preacher. And I said, okay. Because I don't know that. I need you. Well. If you're going to stay in this house. Come on. That you must show up. Come on. Come on. Duty. But I'm not satisfied with their showing up. Yes. You must clock in. Yes. Because people are showing up, but they're not clocking in. And then there's those that clocking in, but they're not working. So I said that I need you to show up, I need you to clock in, and I need you to be ready to work. If you can't do that, then stay where you are in peace. Well, well. Within 10 minutes, the Sambalat and the Tobias yeah. and the Jezebels call another Jezebel to say how I say don't come back to church. So, uh, you don't understand, you know. Yes. Even Jezebel respect the prophets to you know yes. huh? Jezebel man. because Come one on. of the Jezebel they tell and the Jezebel say teach yes you know I what wrong with them people that disrespectful me including <laughs> <laughs> she said but teach the 
you wicked? Sometimes it's put it out there and say, them more wicked than me. And she say, you know what they're saying? They say, you say, don't come back to church. I yes. said, daughter, yes. it don't matter. True. I'm sure the ones who are saying that, they are the ones who decided months ago. So nothing has changed. What has happened is that I checked them yes. at a checkpoint. Yes. And they didn't like being checked. Because they want to go on with uncertainty. And nobody must call you and hold you to strict account. Because we is not God. But if you're under the anointing, then the anointing must check you too. Leadership. 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 Check yourself. If the anointing don't check you and have partiality and they're compromising, God have mercy yes. on their soul yes. when they get yes. to their checkpoint. Yes. Yes. You're preaching, man. You preach. You preach. Two faces so on the wall. Still one in front of the mind. Fix it. Preach, you preach. Husband and I preach. The upset is like getting rage when right? yes. people call you out. Yes. And you know that you're wrong. Yes. You know the thing that you're doing is yes. not nice. Yes. Yes. You know that if the shoe was on the other foot, that you would not like it. Yes. But in rage. Come on, man. Because you want to get off. Yes, yes. You ain't ask mighty, no mighty. question. Uh, you ain't take time to yes. understand. Uh, and you take. Anger. 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 True self. And the guy at the checkpoint allows you to pass. Because he's not the final judge. That's right. Come on, beautiful. So he allows you to get through the checkpoint. But the problem is because you did not stay in your test of wilderness, you didn't take time. To understand the trial or the test. Your copy. So you did not even notice that the test that you just passed through was a great test. So you're walking on your way. You're walking, going up the road. And you're singing and you're dancing because you have overcome. Too many dangers, toil and snare have already come. And when you're walking, because you didn't recognize it, because you didn't recognize it, a little chill blew. It's not a real test yet, you know. But you know what? You've been in the faith for 40 years, working. So, the blood don't go the way it used to go. Mm. And you're cool. So you see a cloak on the road. Mm. And you get back in it. Yes. And you have now re-entered standard one. Mm. Yes. I was on the road to standard two. Yes. But you didn't recognize and take time out yes. to see that you must understand you too must inspect your tests. How many buttons you have? You have pocket that if you come in disguise, I would recognize you like David and see on circumcised. David, rec David recognize him. When nobody else recognizes, you must recognize your giants. But you can't recognize your giants. I ain't said play with your giants. Chop off the head. When David got up on the mountain, David was on top and he had to have been viewing for a while. Because he heard what Goliath was saying and he was looking at his performances. You got to look at your giant performances and when you really severe it, then you say, aha, uh -huh. now I understand you. Because if you get out of this too fast, 
You're doomed to end up back right here. God is going to continually check you and test you because he's working out a better good. In your, or at your very best, well, well, well. at your very best, well, well. some people are saying that word is not for me. <laughs> or somebody might be telling this little girl something. <laughs> You sure right? Somebody told me something. Jesus. It is the hand of God who's right here. I pray God that you've been on a people that is turning away to unsung doctrine. That yearns after fables and lies. Because the word says that man would not be able to withstand some doctrine. So, I have noted here that if you avoid your tests, right, that it is inevitable there is no avoiding. But if you attempt, right, you will continually do the same thing. You're on probation. It is necessary, it's a part of your maturity. It is what caused you to give birth to what God has in you. He has implanted and entrusted you with something, but you can't give birth just like that. You see, there's a process that you must go through, and when you give birth to that thing, it says that your successful navigation of them is a powerful witness. It's not your word that's a witness, you know. You see, there's some people walking around, hallelujah. Don't they trying, they're trying to give you a word and they, hallelujah, bless the Lord, hallelujah, bless the Lord. And I say, Lord, Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And I accept the Lord in the house, hallelujah. Did somebody say praise God, hallelujah. You better believe the word of the Lord, hallelujah. They're fanatics. Your witness must be in the seed that you produce. That if at all it be possible, that you live possible. And if you can. Not some, but all. That you put away all fit. You put away all. Hear what, hear what your test wants to show you. Because you have arrived. You're going to be tested. But as a result of your distrust in God, you become disillusioned. You become distraught. You become distracted. You become angry. You become bitter. And you become hardened. Did I just answer why we have so many bitter people in the church? Mm -hmm. Let me say why my church folks. But in the book of Psalms 34 and 19, the word says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. I love the conjunction, but here. The Lord delivered him out of all. Not some of them, but all of them. So let me caution you. And I'm coming back to the foundation. Let me caution you that you should understand that he's going to deliver you not from some, but all. So if you still, you left the checkpoint and you're still fighting through it, it's because you have not yet been fully delivered. Mm. Mm. Deliverance is not a one-time thing. No, because you might be delivered today from smoking. You might be delivered today from homosexuality. You might be delivered today from drinking. But tomorrow, mm -hmm. tomorrow, you are one of the biggest thieves. You are one of the biggest liars. You are one of the biggest corruptors. Everybody's level is different. Everybody's checkpoint is different. Because what, 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 what would cause me to stretch in my wilderness period may not even affect you. 
what might be your great challenge may not affect me. Because our lives are different and the things that tingle us is different. If you have a faith and it cannot be tested, then your faith cannot be trusted. If I cannot test your faith, some people vex when you test them. Well, why you have to do that and you're not loyal? But Jesus said, Peter, lovest me. Lovest thou me? He knew the answer. He asked him again. You're upset when me test it. I'm testing me, testing me. But if they're trying to make me sin. Nobody ain't trying to make me sin. They're trying to show you or to reveal unto you how easy you will fall back into your old patterns of gossip, complaining, laziness, loss, pride, anger, and selfishness. Cardinal sins. Cardinal sins. Like Israel! Some of us prefer, instead of recognizing, instead of breaking down strongholds and ensuring that we pass the tests, we prefer to turn back and go back to Egypt. The combo man. It's in Egypt, I had to work, but at least I was getting something to eat. You bring me in this land, and there's no food. But the God that provided and parted the Red Sea, don't you think he would do it? So you complain about water. He gave you water. You complain, he gave you manna. You complaining again, he still said, a pillar of fire to lead you in the night. Huh? And a cloud by day. And yet still, when you get to the next checkpoint, Oh God, the water bitter. Man. You're ready to stone the prophet. Because you forget that is the same prophet that God used to lift his hand to clear the way. Man, if you ain't get that yet, you, you're not going to get it. It's that simple. You can't force the word of God on anybody. I say that God is not a bandit. Let me tell you, God has power. That if he wants you to believe him without any, he could do it. But he have a desire. That's why I say I like the, the right love thing. Because my God is I love God. He said, come on to me. The, 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 the carnal man of a song that said, Baby, come to me. I want to have you. Jesus, he said, Come unto me. If you're heavy, lady. And he said, I would give you rest. So he's not going to rape you, he's not going to plunder you, but he gives you the freedom of choice that you would say, I choose you and not debt, not power, not principalities, not spiritual wickedness, not man, not woman, not children, nothing shall separate me from the living God. That's the kind of God that we serve. So he's expecting for you. I'm coming home to Father Abraham because I believe his tests would have been the greatest or one of the greatest. <laughs> because I don't know, Father John. Yes. You see this one picnic that I have? Yes, bless her. Woo! Mm. Yes. Well, you probably love your children, mm. but God, I'm in love with yes, this yes. girl. Go ahead. You see, there's a difference with love and in love. Yes. I'm not huh. talking to Andrew and them. Yes. <laughs> I'm talking to, to I'm not speaking to children. I'm speaking to mature folks. Yes. There's a difference with love, love and, in and love. being in, in love. love. Huh? Someone
one pen and says, when a man loves When Jesus loves him, man. Come on. But what happens? So imagine that kind of love. So when somebody loves God, huh? He'll give up his happy home. So Abraham moved from amongst your king's men, the place that you comfortable and leave them behind. And I will give you another land. And Abraham don't murmur. Give me this boy. And he don't murmur. But he says, son, come. Get a donkey. You know, some of us, God asks us for sacrifice and we carry the same oil because we vex, we have to give it. Uh, yes. But Abraham was protecting his sacrifice. Yes. That he put the lad on a donkey. Mm -hmm. right. Did you get it? Yes. Yes. Did you get it? Your no mom and your vex. No blemish. No blemish. But Abraham was asked to give his mm. very soul and he protected it. Because the God that he was about to offer it to was more than capable, was more than able, was more than willing. Dream leaves, no blemish. Uh -huh. He was and still is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. I want to come down. I want to come down. But somebody's still sitting on the fence. Mm. Somebody take the camera from Sister Nodia. And Nodia going to set me up. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I learned in, in teaching uh, that everybody don't have the same level exactly. or capacity. Um, and... Some people learn by just speech, yes. and some people need a visual aid Amen. to help them. And it's my desire that no stone be left unturned. And say, well, I kind of understood what she said, but I didn't quite get it. Hallelujah. I want you to get it because your test is about to come. I know you thought you would not have made it through the last one. You thought by sure that was your greatest test. But I'm here to tell you because you are here within the sound of my voice. They're busy. He busy. Come, 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 come. Primus, come. Come, brother, come, come. I know you're anointed, but come. I know you're anointed, but come, because I need to make them stumble. I need to check them. I need to make them know that that word what they hear, and they thought, oh, God, God was surely talking to me. I need to let them know that they have not yet arrived at that place. So you don't have none of those issues, and you are really, really, really living a holy and God-fearing life. Mm. Like, no joke, I'm not kidding now. There's some people who is really striving to live a God-fearing life. Amen. Amen. But you two have to go to the checkpoint. Yes. Because of your pure and honest zeal and love for God, he must check you. He said, have you considered my servant Job? He knew what Job would have done. But say, mm, you got some protections around him. Give me a minute. I'll show you. And he allowed it to happen. So if you're being tested, if you're at a checkpoint, God is allowing it. If God is allowing you to be checked, of course, don't get, don't get, don't get because I'm in trouble, no man. Well, logic. They said, don't bring mango. You're bringing mango. You're bringing guana. You're bringing pumpkin tail. You're bringing avocado. You're bringing zabaka. 
tricking. And because you know you're guilty, when the custom officers come and even start to pay like you want to touch your back, attitude central. But uh -huh. we want, well, why you have to check me? You see all the racial profiling? How all the other people go? Even though we have regular checks, there's going to be some running on the checks. Yes. 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 Because some of us know some particular checkpoints in our yes. Yes. so we're going to pass it. Yes. But there's some random checkpoints, yes. some unexpected. So you went through this scanner, yes. you're done pass, <laughs> and your the gate is right here. Right. Yes. Right. With the hope that no one would see. Yes. With the hope 
that no one would know. Yeah. With the hope that nobody ain't going to say nothing. Yeah. And if you are around the wrong crowd that you think is the right crowd, nobody ain't going to say nothing. Nobody ain't going to say nothing. Because they didn't read the disclaimer that if you see something, say something. So you still are willing to admit and you thing and oh God. I know you like that story is a true story, oh my God. Honey boy, I love you. So when you see this table, if you're here, I'm not gonna look to the back to see if you're here. And when they begin to think, check now. And they say, Well, um, you see this? I got to take this. And I'm take out, take out, take out, draw, draw. You want to take out, take out, draw. Because you're wrong. Yeah. And you're strong. Yeah. And you start to say, No, you, you start to get a whole army now. Yeah. The, the one officer that was right. You have a whole movement against Port Authority now. Yes. About how they're not good. And you see these two black people? The Indian man. The Indian and them passing. But you see when we Yes. Do you not say black people? When we pass him, they have to think we and they have to have it name. That good for them. And they vote for Kamala. <laughs> because you wanted to come. But it's because he have a word. He don't allow you to go anywhere that he doesn't want you to be. It's because he wants to speak to your heart. So even though you think you're right, and you don't want nobody to know that the words is hitting you, that's okay. But when you get home, you better find your secret place. Huh? So I wanna drop the built house on the foundation. And get out of your way. So Abraham is on his way to the mountain. So too, a lot of us is on our way to our mountain to be tested. But along the way, along the journey, we get weary. We get tired because of the thorns that are in our side. Because of the naysayers, because of the daysayers, because of the tests, so we give up and never make it up to our mountain. Close this for one second. Some of us get to our mountain. Come on this side because I'm going to use this. This is another mountain right here. This mountain right here. So we go through the test of time. And we come to our mountain, but because of our position, 
He who has begun a good work is able. Huh? Your word tell me to call you. Father, have mercy. You're not a God that tell a lie. I look unto you from whence come it. My help. And my help come it from God. And even when you do that, the devil said the hymns that gets hold of your garment and weighs you down. And weighs you down. And weighs you down. But you gotta remember that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus, 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 Jesus is Lord. you are scared of. You're now in a position to view. And see that even at the moment that he thought that he would test you, that he had already provided the lamb. But if you don't Never see the lamb. So you will try to save your son by not taking him to sacrifice and still lose him because the God that I serve, I believe he will send a message like he had sent unto Esther. And save your thing because you are in the king's house. Huh? But you will perish too. You will perish too. Yes. That's it. Ooh. No, 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 wait. Go in. If I perish. But you have to be moved to that statement. It didn't come from the pureness of her heart. So I don't mind. I don't mind if I have to give you a word to stir up that which is within you so you can move because you need to move you want deliverance some of you have said walking straight and you recognize some of us would have Attempted. But it seems impossible. So you decided and you begin to grow. Huh? Some of us know you have the word to pray. Hmm? And because you're a spiritual breed, you start to grow.
But by this time, I frightened because I studying what else. But I want to appeal to God's merciful nature. And I begin to cry out. Approach my soul. Oh! 